Hello everyone. In the past video, we looked at the concepts of habitat. Then we studied what a producer is, what a consumer is, and the role of predators, scavengers, and decomposers. And finally, we looked at uh, the global feeding methods and how and what are the varieties of uh, the feeding methods which is existing in the nature. So in the current segment and uh, video, we are going to look at uh, what a food chain is and then the human activities. <coughs> so in this uh, video, you will be understanding the food chain and its uh, types, the food webs and the varieties of food webs, the ecological pyramids, human impacts on environment and conservation and uh, the significance of conservation. So these are the aspects which you are going to understand through this video. Now the first is uh, food chain. The question obviously comes what is a food chain? The flow of energy in an ecosystem is a one-way process and the sequence of the organisms through which the energy flows is called as food chain. If you look at this picture uh, at the bottom here, you should be able to understand the whole concept. That is, you have sunlight. That sunlight is trapped by the plants to make use of uh, food materials and those food materials and leaves and uh, those components will be eaten up by the uh, herbivores or primary consumers. These herbivores, that is grasshopper in this case, is eaten up by the uh, consumer or the carnivore, which is the frog. But frog in turn will be eaten up by the eagle or a snake. Now, if you observe here, the energy which was in the form or which is given out by the sun was trapped by the plant, which was, uh, eat, the plant was eaten by the grasshopper. The transfer of energy took place. When the grasshopper eats it and assimilates and uh, grows, that grasshopper is eaten by the frog. The energy again gets transferred to the frog. And from the frog, the, when the frog is eaten by the uh, eagle or a snake, the energy will be transferred from frog to the eagle or snake. Now, if you think the whole sequence or, or the summary of the whole sequence, the energy from the sun is transferred from to the eagle. But it has a lot of mediators and this phenomena is known as the food chain. So food chain is the sequence of who eats whom in the biological community. I think this is one of the best uh, and simplest way you can explain the food chain in the sense in the food chain it is the sequence of who eats whom is nothing but the food chain in an ecosystem to obtain nutrition. But what is the purpose of eating? To obtain the nutrition. So the food chain is nothing but who eats whom for the getting of the nutrition. Then a food chain shows how each living being gets food and how nutrients and energy are passed from the creature to creature or from one level to the next level. So that's what it deals. I, I think I mentioned from the sun to the plant, plant to the grasshopper, grasshopper to the frog, frog to the eagle or a snake. So this is how the transfer of nutrition and hence the energy will take place. And this is nothing but the food chain. A simple example can be uh, as uh, depicted below, there is a plant eaten by the uh, rabbit. The rabbit in turn is eaten by the uh, fox. So this is one of the like, you know, smallest and uh, simplest version of the food chain. Now, when we talk about food chain, a concept comes which is called as trophic, trophic levels. In the sense, you have a producer, you have a consumer and you have decomposer. So all these different uh, uh, stakeholders, they will have their own contribution in the food chain. Producers will uh, synthesize the food, consumers which is composed of primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer and quaternary consumer, they would consume the food accordingly and finally comes the decomposer. 
Now, if you look at the picture here on the right hand side, the producers are at the bottom most level. A lot of plants are there. They are trap the sunlight and convert the sunlight and carbon dioxide and water into food, carbohydrate or any food. They will be eaten up by the primary consumers or the herbivores in this case, which can be a rat or a rabbit or a grasshopper. Some typical examples I am giving here. And those primary consumers or the herbivores are eaten by the secondary consumers or the primary carnivores. So, the energy which is trapped by the plant is consumed by the primary consumer and that is eaten up by a uh, snake or other I mean, mongooses and other organisms that is nothing but the secondary consumer and these organisms in turn that is the primary consumer in turn will be eaten up by the tertiary consumer. So that is how the nutrient transfer from one level to another level takes place. Another simple example for uh, the food chain, there are different varieties of food chain, detritus food chain, grazing food chain and uh, various different uh, food chains. One of the simplest one is a grazing uh, food chain. So in this case, uh, you have a flower that is a producer, plant is a producer, eaten up by the consumer which is a caterpillar, uh, again those caterpillars are eaten by the frog which is a consumer. Uh, the frog is eaten by the snake again is a consumer and those snakes will be eaten in turn by the owls. So this is how the food chain is possible in nature and there are different varieties. Uh, the way it is happens in forest is different from that of the fresh water, uh, from that of the uh, like you know uh, uh, marine water, different ecosystems, the types of food chain will keep on changing based on what organism is present in that environment. Now, <clears throat> if you look at the food chain here, let us concentrate on the bottom. Plant is a primary producer and that belongs to the first trophic level, means they harvest the sunlight and produce their food material. Those uh, plants will be eaten by the herbivores which are primary consumers and their primary consumers will belong to the second trophic level. Uh, the herbivores in turn are eaten up by the carnivores which belongs to secondary consumer but at the trophic level they belong to third trophic level. Trophic stands for food uh, related aspect so it belongs to third trophic level. Now these carnivores are eaten up by the uh, another category of carnivores which are called as tertiary consumers which belongs to fourth trophic level. Finally, these snakes and uh, uh, rats and other things will be eaten by the quaternary consumer which belongs to the fifth trophic level. So if you observe carefully the arrow mark, you will understand the transfer of nutrition as well as the energy from one level to another. Now, is the transfer of food material so simple or transfer of food or nutrition or energy, is that so simple uh, as it is shown in the first uh, diagram? Obviously not. If you observe here, the fact one should understand is that the plant obviously will remain the same. It will uh, trap the sunlight and produce the food. That will be eaten up by the herbivore, that is let us say grasshopper. This grasshopper can be caught by a mice, it can be caught by a snake, it can also be eaten by a eagle. So, we cannot always say that the primary consumer should be eaten by the secondary, secondary should be eaten by the tertiary, ter tertiary should be eaten by the quaternary. That rule is not there. Anything can eat anything, okay? And this concept is called as food web. Now if you observe the picture here, it looks uh, um, kind of a very fuzzy and very complicated. You have a, a set of grass here, there is a tree here, both of them can be eaten by a deer, it can be eaten by a rabbit, it can be eaten by a, a squirrel, but look at the further complexity. These are 
or and can be eaten by multiple different uh, targets so how they are consumed by each other is shown in a food web now when i say food web there are different types of uh, food webs which is possible in the environment first one is the uh, soil food web the transfer of nutrition and energy takes place uh, in the soil soil dwelling organism uh, is different from that uh, of the aquatic uh, organism is different from that of the uh, forest uh, then the food web in the grassland and then the food web in the terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem if you observe each one of them is different because the type of organism which is present in the soil is different from that of the uh, uh, organism present in the aquatic ecosystem and that is different from the forest forest is different from the grassland and uh, grassland is different from the terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem none of them are uh, similar so you would get to see a wide variety of food webs in the nature now there is a concept called as ecological pyramid now the ecological pyramid is an illustration of the reduction of energy as you move through each feeding level in an ecosystem now let's refer this diagram on the right hand side at the bottom most layer you would find these primary producers which are plants huge in number correct now these plants are eaten by the let's say uh, these uh, rabbits look at the number of plants versus look at the number of uh, rabbits here they are much much lesser now observe a level up snakes here you have in the rabbits probably like you know uh, eight to nine rabbits are there but look at the number of snakes much less correct half or even less than half go a level up eagle much lesser than any one of these so as we shift from one trophic level to the next one to the next one to the final one the energy which get transferred from one level to another goes on reducing because of reasons reasons wastage is one of the primary thing why the reduction of energy would take place and each feeding level of the ecosystem is called as trophic level producers form the base of the pyramid naturally because they are the ones who trap the sunlight convert it into uh, some sort of eatable and usable uh, energy format and consumers occupy the uppermost uh, upper and various strata of the trophic levels so this is what in a nutshell a ecological pyramid is that is how the energy gets transferred from one trophic level to another yeah here in this diagram uh, the same concept which we talked about in the previous uh, slide is depicted in terms of energy see sunlight first and foremost the source of energy is the sunlight um, almost like you know let's say 1 million uh, joule of sunlight okay and that when it gets transferred to the primary producer see how many zeros are lost almost like uh, 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 three two zeros are lost here correct from 1 million joules you are coming down to 10000 uh, joules from 10000 joules when it reaches the primary consumer that is grasshopper or or a rabbit or or a deer something like that from 10000 10 fold decrease is seen in the energy from the primary consumer that is grasshopper to rat or mice when it reaches it is just 100 joules again the energy is reduced 10 fold from the secondary consumer to the tertiary consumer which is a snake the energy is just 10 joules so to begin with you had 1 million joules of uh, sunlight and finally when it reaches the tertiary consumer the energy what you are left with is just 10 joules so significant amount of reduction in the energy will take place at different passing trophic levels that concept we should understand that as we go up the uh, pyramid of energy it goes on reducing significantly now 
we talked about components of environment or uh, what it is made up of and those aspects now we should know what is the role of the human activities on the environment i mean we just being there in the environment itself is and can cause lot of uh, imbalances and moreover our greediness also causes unthinkable level of damage onto the environment let us see what is the impact of uh, human beings on the environment see we live in an environment we cause population pressure we cause air pollution we cause water pollution we can we cause land pollution so at any level we are nothing but a, you know a junk piece i would say to be on a harsh uh, note who would cause damage after damage after damage onto the environment you take in terms of population you take in terms of air you take or water you take land you take anything you consider we are there to grab use misuse and destroy the nature okay moving further i would like to draw your uh, attention okay before that see as we as the time passes the population explosion takes place and we are living on the earth does the size of earth increase never it remains the same it it is constant but the population is exploding earth size is same the kind of land mass available for us to inhabit is the same thing so naturally we would start exploring the nature what do we do we try to um, create artificial living areas by cutting out uh, uh, trees forests and uh, we would try to make more livable areas so that we can you know occupy some decent amount of land also we are exploring into the sea if you think of uh, I, if if i can give a simple example palm island in dubai that is an artificially synthesized or uh, uh, created uh, island by uh, pumping in millions and millions of uh, tons of uh, sand uh, stone and uh, uh, concrete they have constructed that uh, island again we are getting into the sea we are expanding into the sea so again man made activity then coming on to the pollution air pollution because of uh, human population explosion what is happening we want comfort we want standard living condition we want a uh, uh, high end living condition as a result industry expands as a result the number of vehicles are increasing as a result more and more exhaust gases are released into the environment which eventually leads to the air pollution one of the classical example we can give is that of the delhi air condition or, or air quality rather so if you have read during uh, corona time the air quality was had improved significantly during that time which is an indication that we the human beings are causing unparalleled unmatched damage to the air and causing the pollution there next is the water pollution again as a result of industrialization uh, more effluents are generated those effluents we happily leave into the water bodies be it the pond lake river sea anything ultimately leading to the toxicity and uh, damage to the water finally the land pollution as a result of cutting the trees you will see soil erosion taking place one of the things then <coughs> as i mentioned you are uh, luxurious lifestyle would create lot of waste materials correct whether it is plastics computers that is e waste um, daily way, uh, use uh, using uh, items anything you would uh, look into for that matter lot of solid waste liquid waste are generated what are you going to do i'll find a empty place i'll dump all my plastics and uh, uh, ceramics and all those kind of things in a place where nobody is looking at me and happily i happily i would uh, pollute that area and 
deforestation because of increasing number of uh, uh, human uh, humans on the uh, on the earth we want more area to live what we will do we will cut the uh, forest make layouts and we start living in there resultant of this activity is unthinkable again i would like to quote an example of our own karnataka place that is kodagu or kur what we what we call it as kodagu madikeri <coughs> if you have observed the havoc what has been created in the past couple of years is beyond our imagination and uh, hundreds and thousands of people have lost their uh, houses their loved ones their uh, properties their wealth everything has been vanished right in front of eyes within couple of seconds landslides i'm sure everybody has read or seen or experienced that i don't have to tell so this is nothing but the uh, as for the experts is the outcome of human activity or which is called as anthropogenic activity i'll i'll give a couple of uh, pictures here this is uh, some area i i don't know uh, uh, belize they say here it is belize look at the time frame here 1975 beautiful lush green um it it looks uh, so good to see such kind of uh, you know a piece of land there but see what we have done within a very short period of time same picture look you can you can compare it uh, for example here the water body is there same area this is 1975 this is 2007 see how much mass of uh, forest has been wiped out almost like uh, 50 to 60% of the forest has been wiped out this extreme left area completely it is wiped out here see it was lush green but here completely it is wiped out and other areas also lot of uh, wiping out of the forest has taken place and look at the density also even if you look at the area here which is slightly lesser uh, less denser but see these areas much less dense compared to the 1975 all these are because of the anthropogenic activities that is the human interventions and humans getting into that area for constructing houses industries and other things another example i would like to quote again some aerial uh, shot of a place this is in 2001 2004 within a short period of time you would see or you would start observing lot of uh, changes in this area you can see that lot of uh, new uh, empty spaces or deforested areas are coming and check here law i mean the size has increased in this area let's move further for 2007 a clear cut difference is there between 2001 to 2007 at the central portion lots and lots of new uh, empty spaces or the places without forest has come up going further 2010 see the difference between 2003 sorry 2001 and 2010 just within a span of 9 years such a devastation let us move further to 2013 condition is even worse and 2016 i don't have to tell you but now just compare 2001 and 2016 just within a span of uh, 15 years the face of that area has completely changed this is because of human activities beyond any doubt now how are uh, these we polluting the environment how are we destroying the environment let's look into see as the time passes this would increase more people means population explosion will take place as a result what happens we start using more raw materials whether it is food land consumables anything the amount what we use naturally will increase and uh, with the more uh, money inflow or with more uh, economic growth we have the habit of buying more and end up using a lot of raw materials <coughs> we use more lands to build buildings to have farms whether it is organic farming uh, or conventional farming uh, quarries or dumps 
all these number will increase with the time when we have more people we use more energy because people uh, uh, need to migrate travel shift from one place to another so naturally we would use more energy which is currently in the form of fossil fuel petrol diesel and those things but recently people are uh, you know environmentalists are uh, trying to push the use of biodiesel using alternative uh, energy such as solar energy uh, nuclear energy and those kind of things but i think we are in the infancy of them we still need to uh, go a quite long uh, time i mean uh, with respect to the path then we produce more waste more pollution when you have more people more waste is produced because of which more pollution happens that is pesticides and herbicides see we end up using more lands because we need a uh, uh, lot of food materials and when we want food materials what happens we cut the forest or wherever we grow the possibility of pests invading the food is or, or the crop is more we end up using more pesticides and herbicides naturally they enter the earth they enter the water they do not get degraded easily hundreds and thousands of years they will remain as it is in the nature <coughs> as a result of producing more waste we end up producing more carbon dioxide more uh, sulfur dioxide more carbon monoxide and smoke again we are causing harm to the air and water then sewage and fertilizer sewage fertilizer and toxic waste more human be i mean look at uh, some of the areas in mangalore for example lot of new buildings have come up that is apartment i am saying 30 20 30 story buildings lots are there imagine each uh, apartment has four people and in that uh, uh, apartment complex 100 houses are there 100 into 4 400 people are there and on an average each person uses 100 liter of water per day imagine how much water is required and those after usage you will be using out of those 100 liters you hardly will be using 2 liters to 3 liters of water for drinking rest everything will be a waste water waste that is that comes under sewage do you think uh, or do we think that these uh, high rise buildings and apartments may manage the sewage that efficiently i have a serious concern and doubt regarding that then you have fertilizers uh, to cope up with the food production you start using uh, fertilizer and uh, toxic waste Uh, as a result of uh, using raw mat i mean various different materials such as computers electronics it would lead to the formation of lot of uh, electronic waste which can contain which can which will contain lot of waste materials so eventually what we are doing is as the population increases we would end up spoiling polluting water air land and every possible area we are going to spoil it in the name of development now is that the end obviously no we need to survive if we need to survive the condition has to improve if the condition has to improve we have to conserve our nature and our ecosystem so why do we need conservation so conservation is really uh, needed because the rapid growth of population has led to the increased demand of land and water also and thus the destruction of natural habitat so as a result of population being exploding we need more land more materials more raw materials and in the name of it we would be destroying our natural habitat so what is the solution for this one the solution is conservation the uh, conservation can be achieved by the wise use of natural resources i'll give a simple uh, example we go to our restrooms or any places to wash hand and we see a tap water running somebody has left it running okay water is uh, con continuously pouring out what can i do just turn off the tap that's it if it is kept open for one hour just imagine the amount of water being lost 
think about for every 2 minutes 1 liter of water waste imagine how much water is wasted in 60 minutes that is 1 hour what if it happens for a day so best thing is use our natural resources in a wisely manner then least distribution disturbance to the environment let us try to minimize the disturbance onto the environment and we will give a good quality of life to man or our next generation that is the that is the our contribution to the nature ways of doing it how do we how can we do that recycling of used materials so this is one of the best way we can contribute to the conservation recycle paper aluminum cans any possible materials we can recycle and reuse it please do that then economical use of uh, natural resources that is uh, develop other energy sources like solar energy nuclear energy uh, for the energy uh, purpose instead of uh, solely depending upon um, petrol and diesel which eventually is going to get uh, exhausted so we will have to come up with the solar or other kind of alternative energy third aspect what we can do is controlling of the pollution decrease the content of lead sulfur in petrol this is just one simple single step i am saying there are like you know thousands of methods by which we can control the pollution then install catalytic converter in motor cars sewage treatment and there are huge other list of uh, events what we can do to conserve our nature to reduce the possibility of pollution so in this video we looked at uh, or we understood what the food chain is uh, the significance of food web what are the different varieties of food webs then we looked at ecological pyramids and uh, anthropogenic activities in the sense the effect of uh, human activities on nature and why we need to conserve the nature and what are the methods by which we can conserve the nature. I hope uh, it was useful to you. Thank you guys.